Welcome back to Combat Mission, where we're going to take a look at the heavier infantry weapons. Generally, these are weapons that travel in multiple parts and have to be put together to be fired, or that require more than one soldier to be most effective. As usual, we're dealing with gameplay mechanics here, so it works the same way across all the Combat Mission titles, even though you're mostly going to be seeing Shock Force 2 here. Everybody wants more firepower, and there's obviously a limit to the capabilities of weapons small enough to be carried by individual soldiers. While today most heavier weapons can be carried in or mounted on vehicles, there are always going to be circumstances where it's not appropriate to use wheels or tracks. Infantry can go where vehicles can't, they're easier to hide, they're a lot lighter when thinking about things like air transportation, and while certain weapons are definitely too heavy and bulky to be carried by individuals, they can usually be disassembled into more manageable loads. So heavy weapons are usually operated by teams, with different soldiers in the team carrying different parts of the weapon or ammunition and having different roles once the weapon is set up. As such, Heavy weapon teams have a kind of hybrid unit card in the UI, they're sort of halfway between infantry squads and vehicles. In the centre of the UI we have a silhouette of the weapon itself, underneath which we have some information on the weapon's range, type and calibre. Off to the left we have its designation and above that there are some circles corresponding to the soldiers in the team. Just like in vehicles, these are blue when the soldier is okay, yellow when they're wounded, and red or empty when they're out of action or otherwise missing. To the left, we can see what those individual soldiers are armed with and if they have any specific roles. On the right, we can see the heavy weapon specific ammunition the team is carrying. Underneath it all, we've got a general indicator of the speed of the team. Different weapons weigh different amounts and are split across different numbers of soldiers, so speeds can vary, and some indicators for the time it takes to deploy and pack up the weapon. Heavy weapons have two in-game states. They can be deployed, or they can be not deployed. As a general rule, when they're deployed, they can shoot, but they can't move, and when they're not deployed, they can move, but can't shoot, which makes sense. Non-deployed weapons will have the words not deployed written over the silhouette on the unit card. To deploy them, we simply go to the special commands tab and click on deploy weapon. The team will then start setting the weapon up. The soldier activity text on the left will say they are deploying and it will take round about the time indicated below the unit card to set up. This can vary considerably from weapon to weapon. It's obviously a lot quicker to throw a tripod down and stick an M240 on it than it is to set up a tow launcher. These times are generally longer when the team is setting up inside a building. Weapons like machine guns and automatic grenade launchers usually come with fairly low tripods because this is simply more practical out in the open, but indoors this means that the crew are going to have to start moving furniture and other objects around to make a raised firing position aiming out of a window unless they want to engage the skirting board. So setting up something like a machine gun in a building can actually take a couple of minutes instead of the 20 seconds it takes outside. Also worth bearing in mind with buildings is that while weapons with significant backblast, like tow, can be deployed and fired inside buildings, this is not a fun experience for the weapons team or anybody sharing the space with them. Backblast and confined spaces are a bad combination that will not only suppress and probably pin your troops, but can seriously injure them. Packing weapons up again is the exact process in reverse. Deployed weapons will have the deploy weapon command lit up. Clicking on it again will order the crew to take it apart so they can move again. Packing up times also vary, so be aware that you might not be able to shoot and scoot with some weapons. A few final notes on deploying weapons. If a deployed team is only moving a short distance, usually one or two action squares, then depending on the weapon they might be able to just pick it up as it is and carry it over in its deployed state, avoiding having to fully pack up and redeploy. This can be really handy when you have to bug out over a reverse slope or round a corner. Some lighter weapons, especially GPMGs like the M240, have a bipod and are capable of being operated by a single soldier. So these don't have a not deployed state, instead they have a semi deployed state where the weapon is mobile and can still be fired, but doesn't have the advantages in stability and capacity for sustained fire that they get from being deployed on their tripod. This is particularly handy in buildings where you can immediately start to engage instead of having to wait to construct a proper firing position. Finally, 
Heavy weapons teams frequently don't carry all of their own ammunition. In the modern titles, extra ammo can usually be found in vehicles, especially a heavy weapon team's own vehicle, and in the World War II games most come with ammo bearer teams. So it's important to keep them close, or to make sure you're doing ammo runs to avoid running dry. That's it for this basics video. Quick look at how heavy weapon teams work in combat mission. Hope you'll find that useful and interesting. I'll catch you in the next video.